In Matthew 27, verse 51. <clears throat> and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. <clears throat> okay. The law is finished. Now, what are you going to do when you profess your church to be the temple of, of God and, you know, that when here, it's finished, it's done. 70 AD, this building is going to fall. Now, I've heard reports where they sold it back up, but you can sell it all you want. It's done with Jesus Christ. It was rent from top to bottom. Twain, too. You had a king in the Old Testament go in there and offer incense, and he comes out leprous. Nobody's going to walk into the most holy place. Grab hold of that veil that's before the Ark of the Covenant, the most holy place, and rip that thing. It's a miracle. And if there's anything that the priests or anybody describes or anybody would say that this is the Messiah is the fact is, who went in that room and ripped that veil? There's only one that could go inside that veil once a year. That's the high priest. you got two of them, and they're, they're, they've already charged the Messiah with the crime and put them on the cross. you got men in, in the priesthood like John the Baptist's father. He goes in there. Lights the incense altar during the prayer, but he ain't going through that. Veil. He ain't touching that veil. David had one of his men touch the Ark of the Covenant because the ox stumbled. And God said, boom, you're dead. And there was not a last miracle sign for the, the, the religious crew who rent that, who rent that temple. And what they did is they sewed it up and they, it never happened. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. So the very fact is that God has died. And I say that tongue in cheek because Jesus is God, but Jesus was 100% man. There's the death. He's 100% God. There's a resurrection. The whole earth at the death of Jesus, the temple goes in mayhem. It's a sign that Jews require a sign from the birth of Jesus to the death of Jesus. And the graves were open. Now, see, watch. You got to watch your words. You got to have the right Bible. It says many bodies, not all bodies. Peter in Acts chapter 2 is going to tell us David is still in the grave. Not everybody got up. It says many. Many is a lot different from all. Many people are going to heaven, but not all. Many of the bodies of the saints. Now, the saints of the words of the saints in the Bible is Old Testament. That's who he was talking about. I, I, I was sat underneath a, pre, a preacher, a pastor of a church. You know, there were Christians in the Old, Old Testament. No, they were called saints. I didn't look it up. I don't think anywhere. Saints is called a, a Christian. It could be. I didn't look it up, but that's an Old Testament phrase. Saints. Which slept a road. I'll tell you who one of them was. I know for sure. That repented thief. Slept means death in the Bible in some cases. Sleep can mean you're physically laying in a bed or laying somewhere taking a nap. You're sleeping for the night. And slept is also death, a resurrection. But you got to read the Bible correct again. And came out of the graves. All right, so in the graves, the woes that slept arose. Came out of the graves after his resurrection. So Jesus gives up the ghost, dies. 
The veil is rent. The graves are open. The saints that are dead arose. But they did not come out of the graves to after his resurrection. That's not the rapture. At the rapture, when the trumpet blows, those are dead in Christ shall rise. Are the graves going to open up? Are people going to? We don't know. And went into the holy city, which would be Jerusalem, after the resurrection, and peered unto many. <laughs> So you got the Old Testament saints just showing up. <laughs> well, hi, <laughs> who are you? I'm Samuel. I'm Solomon. A lot of things have happened since I was in charge of this place. And many appeared unto many, not all. Jesus Christ never showed up to the chief priests. Jesus Christ never showed up to the Pharisees and Sadducees and Scribes. Jesus Christ never showed up to the Roman leaders when he after he resurrected. Probably the same thing with the, with the saints here. Probably showed up to the disciples and those that believed. Now when the centurion and they that were with him, the centurion, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake happen. So the earth literally, literally quaked. Things rumbled. I've never been in an earthquake. And those things that were done. You're not looking at the dead bodies. That wasn't until after his resurrection. That wasn't until three days later. The things plural. What happened to Jesus on the cross? They feared greatly. And the fear of the Lord's beginning of wisdom, the fear of the Lord's beginning of knowledge. Truly, this is the trouble. Read your words. This was the Son of God. No, you got it wrong. He is the Son of God. Many women, not all, read the words. Were there beholding afar off. So they weren't up to the cross. They were there. So you've got Saturian, those that were with him, and you got many women. We'll read later on John, the Apostle John, are witnessing. Chief priests and the scribe, all of them on this afternoon are witnessing and can testify that Jesus was nailed to the cross and he died. That's important because there are religions and sects out there that they profess that Jesus only passed out. And when they put him in the tomb, we're going to read about hopefully tonight so much to deal with. When they laid him on that cold rock, he popped up and, you know, like putting ice on somebody. He came to his senses. No. It's not what the gospel say. Many women were there beholding far off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. They took care of him. They helped him. You say, who washed Jesus' clothes? Who made the meals on that? The women. Who's, who sought the needs that he needed. Among them, which is Mary Magdalene, which we'll learn about later with the scriptures and all that. And, you know, the, the world has that Jesus had an affair with this woman and all that. You're just a bunch of kooks. All right. Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. Now, we got a problem with the Baptists as much as the Catholics. The Catholics will raise Mary as the queen of heaven, and, and you know the Baptists don't like that because it's unscriptural, which is true. Mary is not the queen of heaven. She's not the perpetual virgin. She can't hear your prayers. She cannot save you. But the Baptists, on the other hand, will take this verse here. Uh, 
this is not the Mary you're thinking of. Well, let's look at the scripture, shall we? Chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse 55 or 35. Can't read my old writing. All right, 55. Matthew 13, 55. And we can look at others. Mark 6, 3, 15, 48. But we'll look at one tonight. Mark 13, 55. Is not this the carpenter's son? Gee, I wonder who we're talking about. Is not his mother called Mary? Gee, who we're we talking about? His brethren, James, Joseph, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. You got that? Go back to Matthew 27. Because your typical Baptist will now leave out Mary. We know by the Gospel of John, Mary's there. And I passed it. Uh, verse 56. Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. That's Mary, the mother of Jesus. There's two of the brothers of Jesus. Jane, now, they're not there. They're just saying, who, who, who's, the, who's the mother here? James and Joseph. Well, if, if the Bible glorifies this woman, Mary, as much as the Catholic Church is, why didn't it say Mary, the mother of Jesus? Did you notice that? Now, even the Baptists will run. Oh, and they'll tell you, this is another Mary. Man, it, you know, the Catholics get it wrong, and the Baptists get it wrong. And, and you know, here I got the son of Aphrius, Matthew 4, 21, no. No. <laughs> scripture with Scripture. James and Joseph are the brothers of the children of Mary. The Mary is his mother. There she is. But the, but the Bible does not go to authoritizing her as, you know, the, the mother of Jesus. Jesus will throw out his ministry. Woman. He doesn't even call her mother. There's one thing the Bible does, does not want to put Mary on a higher plane than she is. Though she had to be an extraordinary woman for God to choose her. Let's not put her on a heavenly pedestal. Then let's not throw her to the, to the side of the street in the dust and mud and animal poop. And you see that Jane, you know, then you go over. That's the James, you know, who wrote the book of James. The epistle of James. No. Peter, James, and John, the mother of Zebedee's children. Zebedee's children are James and John. The mother of Zebedee's children is the wife of Zebedee. And they have two children, James and John. There they are. So it seems Zebedee was left behind in the boat, but his wife went with Jesus. Interesting. And his two sons. And when the evening was come, 6 p.m., there came a rich man of Artemisia named Joseph. Notice how all the Old Testament names are showing up with Jesus. Who also himself was, a, was Jesus' disciple. Gee, he's not listening to the disciples of Jesus. But there he is. Maybe later on, when after the list was made, maybe he comes to be. I don't know what the story is. I can give you some things, but he went to Pilate, there's Pontius Pilate again, and begged the body of Jesus. Notice that he had to beg it. What do you want with that, that body of that criminal, which is not a criminal? Now he says the body of Jesus, not Jesus. Jesus ain't there. Jesus is in hell. Jesus is in the underworld. His body's laying there on the ground because it's taken off the cross. Don't get his body and don't get Jesus together. They're not together. 
because then you run into a cult, into a heresy. Then Bible, then the Bible, then Pilate commanded the body, the body, not Jesus, to be delivered. All right, here he is. Here it is. And when Joseph had taken the body, not Jesus, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Now we got to hurry up because because the Sabbath is coming. You can't work on the Jewish Sabbath. So everything that happens now is haphazardly done. And this will explain in chapter 28 when we get to it, why they're hurry bringing all the stuff. This should have been done when he was buried, but you couldn't because the Sabbath is coming. And guess who's standing there? The chief priests, the Sadducees, the, the, the scribes, and the, and the Sadducees and all. They're all standing there. And under the evil eye of the of the religious realm of people, they're not going to break the Sabbath. Because they don't even know who their Messiah is right now because it's dead. And no one here, here, no one here stays the three days and three nights to watch him come out of the grave. No one. And laid it in his own new tomb. You take a dead body, you put it in a tomb. He's has a brand new tomb, and he gives it to Jesus. I guarantee Joseph, when he ends up in heaven, he'll be rewarded for giving him his tomb. You can give Jesus anything that you have for the honor and glory of Jesus. Jesus, who is God, who is wonderful, and, and God and man couldn't even afford a burial tomb. which he had hewed out of the rock. So this tomb is made for Joseph. He rolled a great stone. Now notice rocks, rocks, stone show up. And he rolls a great stone because, you know, hey, listen, it, it's a burial cave. We don't want anybody going in there. We don't want the stink coming out. And as we learn in John chapter 11 with Lazarus, this is the same thing they did. They roll a stone on the door. Nothing fascinating, nothing. And departed. You mean he didn't wait the three days? If he's a disciple, I know he's heard what Jesus said. And Jesus said often enough that, hey, three days and three nights, they're, they're, they're going to crucify me, they're going to mock me, they're going to scorn me, but three days and three nights, I'm coming up. Destroy this body in three days, I'm going to raise it. Nobody got it. And there was Mary Magdalene. You learn about here, Lord willing, the Gospel of John, when you read it. And the other Mary. Could be Mary, the mother of Jesus. There was a Mary, the, 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 the sister to Lazarus, sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day, everybody's going to clear, we're on the Sabbath. Now the next day, the, the, that followed the day of the preparation. And everything is all ready. This is where you move all the, 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 I mean, you come to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The chief priests, the Pharisees, came together on the pilot. I hope, I hope it wasn't an uh, amount of footsteps that violated the uh, Sabbath. But, What are you going to do? It's a Sabbath coming. Now, the Sabbath that Jesus died wasn't a Saturday Sabbath. It was a high day, John tells. It was during the middle of the week. It was a uh, the third to fourth day, not Wednesday. They didn't have the Popish calendar back then. And when you count the fourth day, the three or fourth day, you count three days and three nights, you get the seventh day. I mean, excuse me, you get the first day. 
Jesus Christ was resurrected on the first day. The Sabbath is the seventh day. Three days and three nights brings you for the first day of the week. That brings you to the middle of the week that Jesus died. This is not Friday, Good Friday, as a Southern Baptist with a doctor degree that his wife believes that Jesus died on Good Friday. That's Roman Catholic crap. That's the crap of the Baptist Catholic and the Catholic Baptist. If your wife doesn't know the scriptures and has Catholic theology, then go ahead and retire and get away from the ministry. If you don't even know what Bible to use, good. You and your family get out of the ministry now. And I'm amazed how many Baptists out there follow the Catholic. They'll bash the Catholics, but even that, they don't do that. You know, every church you go by, say a little prayer for it. I ain't saying no prayer for the Jehovah Witnesses. Saying, sir, look at that respect. We remember that this deceiver, that, that, that's what they call Jesus. So they didn't believe who he was. While he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. How come the chief priests and the Pharisees understand what Jesus said? But his own disciples didn't. But remember that charge there? In chapter 27, verse 40, Thou destroyest the temple and build it in three days. Save thyself. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just mocked him on the cross. You just mocked him on your kangaroo court. And now you come to the governor of Rome and say, You know what he said? He said, Three days he's going to resurrect all that tomb. They heard what Jesus said. They just didn't want to believe it. Your family, your friends, your co-workers, even the people in your church, they hear you with the truth. But Paul said to Christians, have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? They hear it. How many times did Peter, James, and John hear Jesus? Where were they three days? Up in the upper room. The two men on the road to Emmaus. <laughs> Jesus died. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure. That means sure would be make it exact, make it secure. Now, where the bank president would say, all right, you guys lock that vault. And it better not be when we come in the morning that that vault be open. You got some explaining to do. Make it sure unto the third day. Look how they keep saying. Third day, three days. They know. Least the disciples come by night. Don't worry. They ain't going to come by night because they don't even understand. And steal him away. And say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. The angels say to the women, he is not here, he is risen. You see those Pharisees, those chief priests, knows there's no Sadducees because they don't believe in the resurrection. Knows they know what the scriptures say. They knew what he said. They just don't believe it. So that the last error shall be worse than the first. What's the error? You know, they can't, you know, he, his body was stolen and we reported, look, he's not here. Pilate said unto them, ye had a watch. That means they're not Roman soldiers. They are Jewish soldiers. They are Hebrew soldiers. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. They're going to send a Hebrew man under Pilate's seal. 
and they're going to stand watch day and night for three days to make sure the disciples don't come and steal that body. The disciples don't come. The only men that are, are there for the three days is not to see the resurrected Christ, it's because they're being paid. You imagine with some of them fell away. Oh, I gotta work the I gotta work the midnight ship. <laughs> the gladiators are in town. I gotta go watch that dead man. Oh, I got second ship. Oh, come on. You got I'm gonna go watch a dead man's tomb. Really? I mean, you know how your job is. <laughs> Make it as sure as you can. Pilate doesn't seem to be too. <laughs> you know, I believe that Pilate believes who Jesus was. He just didn't believe who Jesus was. You say, what do you mean? There are people who believe in Jesus. They just don't have enough faith to believe in Jesus. So they went. That would be the chief priests and the Pharisees. Made the sepulchre sure under the seal of Pilate, sealing the stone that was already set in a watch. And that watch is not your clock, that's men, military. So, we have Mark 15. Mark 15, 42. Look at all the scriptures. Mark 15, 42. Now, when the evening was come, because it was the preparation, the Sabbath is coming, that is the day before the Sabbath. So this is not the Sabbath. The time that Jesus died is a high day Sabbath. The weekly Sabbath is the, the, the Saturday, the seventh day. We're coming up to that day. But he didn't die on Friday. Joseph of Army is an honorable counselor. Look at that. So he's uppity up with the uppity up ups in Israel. Which also waited for the kingdom of God. So you know what he's thinking? Here's this Jesus, here is the king, here is the ruler. What's he thinking? He's going to give his king a tomb. That, that really sounds... Came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. Okay? Matthew said, beg. Oh, please, Pilate, come on. Let me have it. So it seems like Pilate... Didn't want to give up the body of Jesus, not Jesus. Because that body is dead. That body is not Jesus. Jesus is in the underground. Get that. Know that. And Pilate marveled that he was dead. Excuse me. He was already dead. Did you get that? The women saw him die on the cross. The soldiers saw him die on the cross. The people saw he died on the cross. John saw he died on the cross. The Romans saw he died on the cross. The chief priest saw he died on the cross. Pilate said, is he dead? Now watch. Calling unto him a centurion. Calls him one of his military men. And asked him whether, he'd been bent, uh, whether he had been any while dead. Pilate said, hey soldier, come here. Go check and see if that man's dead. Because usually the crucified didn't die so quickly. And when he knew, when he knew, when he knew it was the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Nowhere. The centurion comes back, he's dead. That centurion is not going to go to a Roman official and lie to him, like some religions teach. You didn't, listen, if you were a soldier in the Roman army, you did what you were supposed to do. You followed orders. Or you didn't go home that day. You know, that Philippian jailer is scared that we lost some prisoners because he would have been killed. Remember, he took the sword and his family. So Pilate gets 
the confirmation Jesus is dead. Jesus is dead. We are at one third of the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died. It is affirmed. You don't believe that Jesus died? I don't know if Pilate got saved or not. His history is really. But God would say, Pilate, step up forward. Yes, sir. Did I die? Yes, sir. That's what the centurion reported to me. What do you think? You think they laid my body in that cold tomb and I popped up? <laughs> I'm not Pillsbury. I don't pop up in fresh. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. The body, not Jesus. The body, not Jesus. And they brought fine linen and took him down. Now he's already off the cross, but remember, he's on a mount. He's on a place called the skull. That means what they took him down. You know, like you go up to Jerusalem, you come down from Jerusalem and wrapped him in the linen. Now, this is not the complete Jewish burial. They got to hurry up. The Sabbath is coming. You got the chief priest. They're watching him. And if you can't roll, you know, wheat between your hands and eat the wheat without them raising a fuss. And laid him in the sepulcher, which was hewed out of the rock, and we, Matthew tells us more. And rolled a stone onto the door of the sepulcher. Mary Magdalene, the Mary of Joseph. Now, you remember Matthew? Remember Matthew 13, 55? That's Mary, the mother of Jesus. Joseph is jo Jesus' brother. Now, Joseph is not there, but the mother is. John will tell us Mary's there and who Mary is. And it's kind of, isn't it quite interesting to learn, you know, the brother of Joseph, the brothers of James. But when Mary's there and John is there with Jesus on the cross, he turns his mother over to John not his brothers. You know what the primary Jewish law is? I forget if it's China or Japan. It's the law that the children are to take care of their parents. And Jesus hands his mother over, not to his brothers or sisters he has. He turns them over to the disciple that he loved. Now think about that. Because the Bible tells us Mary, the mother of Joseph. And you know, his own brother didn't believe in him. We learn later on that James will believe him. What about the others? Well, Jesus didn't have enough to say, here, take care of mom. I'll have somebody else take care of her. He doesn't call her mother. He calls her woman. So Luke 23 and we're just reading scripture with scripture of the King James 1611 Bible. We're not going to get into the Mickey Mouse land. You want to waste your money in the Mickey Mouse land, go ahead. I don't get you no reward in heaven. I'll get you two goofy ears. By the way, Mickey Mouse and all, that's unclean in the Bible. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor. He was a good man. And just. So by the law, he had a good standing. He's a counselor. He's rich. He's a disciple. Can the rich get saved? Yes. The same had not consented to the counsel of the deed. Of so he's in the Sanhedrin. But he's not in the Sanhedrin when it came to being against Jesus. He didn't show up. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also waited for the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God would be the kingdom of Jesus. This man went on to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Oh, no, there we go, begged and begged. So you would get to the idea that, I don't know what would happen to that body if Joseph didn't step in. I mean, they were auctioning off. They were gambling his clothes. 
And you know the Catholic body, Catholic churches, they build their altars on relics. Can you imagine if they grabbed the head of Jesus, which they did to, uh, with, with, with John the Baptist? You know, their beheadings there were. They beheaded uh, King Saul and his sons. He took it down, the body, the body, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in the sepulcher that was hewed in stone where never man before was laid. So what's a new tomb? No one's ever laid in it. And the day was the preparation, the Sabbath drew on. Okay, we just passed the midweek high day Sabbath called the Passover. The Passover was the Sabbath. That was the midweek, never Wednesday. Don't get into Wednesday. That's a Roman Catholic holiday. The seventh day coming up, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, that is the Sabbath. That's the Sabbath we're preparing ourselves for here, and it's going to be already started the Feast of Unleavened Bread. On the Sabbath, you go nowhere and you do nothing. The women also which came with him from Galilee followed after and beheld the sepulcher, so they are witnesses how his body was laid. They saw them wrap the body, they saw them take the body and put it in the tomb. The death, well, excuse me, the, the suffering and the death of Jesus and the burial of Jesus was witnessed. And they return, prepare spices and ointments, and rest of the Sabbath day according to the command. So before the seventh day begins, which would be the sixth day, the women are sitting there, okay, this place is get everything all done. Seventh day comes, all right, sit down, don't do nothing, keep the spices over there. And when it comes to first day of week, they're ready to grab everything to go, and let's go. That's what's going on. John 19. John 19. I mean, you've got to read all the scriptures. I've been I've been in I've been in churches, Baptist church. Uh, you know, we gotta do three chapters in this 45 minutes. Look, we went through the whole Bible. <laughs> After this, Joseph Armenia, being a disciple of Jesus, oh, listen, that's twice said. But secretly for the fear of Jews. Ah, okay, he's a secret disciple. So don't pick on the secret Christians because Joseph was one of them. Besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, not Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. That means he allowed him. Military talk. He came therefore, took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus. Uh oh, 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 oh. That's John chapter 3. Which at the first came to Jesus by night, John chapter 3, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, but not everything that needed to be done because we're going to the Sabbath. About the 100 pound weight. Evidently it's not enough because the women on the sixth day prepare more. Then they took, then took they the body of Jesus, not Jesus, and wound it up in linen clothes. You remember John 11 when Lazarus, he was bound hand and foot? <laughs> That's what they're doing to Jesus. Took the body and wound it in linen with the spices. As the manner of the Jews, it was the burial. That's how they buried their dead. Okay. By the way, like Lazarus, who was who was supernatural, Jesus would not have been coming walking out of that tomb with all that linen. Lazarus had to float out. 
because he was wrapped. Not like your mummy. They wouldn't listen. The Jews wouldn't wrap their people like Egyptian mummy. Now, in the place where he was crucified, the skull, Gagatha, there was a garden. <laughs> Look, before he goes to Calvary, he's in a garden in Gethsemane. He goes to Calvary, the place of the skull, and he's crucified. And from this crucifixion upon the skull, he's brought into another garden. Adam. Adam is put into a garden. Garden of Eden. Adam becomes a sinner. Jesus Christ never sinned. He sinned this, but Jesus takes on our sin. Adam is brought out of the garden. Jesus is brought out. Out of the garden. And tried. Adam is brought out of the garden. As tried. Are you telling me that Adam did not go back to gardening? Another garden? Did he learn a new career? Evidently not because his son picks up, his firstborn son picks up fruits and vegetables. So Jesus, like Adam, he's in a garden. He's brought out of a garden. He faces judgment of God. And then he's brought back into a garden. Like Adam, maybe. Garden, a new sepulcher. So a lot of your garden, I mean, a lot of your 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 cemeteries have a garden, a little place of oh, isn't this great? And they don't even know why they do it. Where it was never man yet laid. Now it could be a possibility that this garden, everything was owned by Joseph. That Joseph wanted the sepulchre and he wanted a garden, maybe. They laid, there laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. So, it was close to quarters, it was given by Joseph, and we got to hurry up. Boy, they really have a lot of regard for the body of Jesus, don't they? And we're going to go into, they're all boo-hooing, crying, he's dead, and we thought he was, you know. 